this an old Terminator hand? Was that the, or is it just a sculpture? What's that? No, that's a sculpture I made back when I was working as a, an assistant for Chico McMurtry at Amorphic Robot Works in the early 90s. Cool. It formerly it's held lovely. up a whole sculpture of mine that I then rejiggered the hand of, but I cut it off there and kept that, and I've always liked that piece. I like that you signed it with the MIG. Yes. Yeah. Why not? Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I am Will. I am Adam. And I am Norm. Um, how are you guys doing this morning? I'm doing pretty good. Doing I've had half good. a cup of coffee, and I'm hoping to remedy that I'm after this podcast. 16 ounces exactly, because it's <laughs> empty. Does it text you when you're done? No. You know what? That Can we talk about <laughs> stupid yeah. products? Yes, yes, please. I was with somebody last week who said... Have you seen this smart water bottle? It sends I, you a I message when you've not drunk enough my, water. And to be fair, this is a friend. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to out them. You yeah, were there. Yes. Yeah. People are buying water bottles that then tr alert you that you haven't drank enough water. So this is this is this is perhaps I, I, the most thirst, thirst is what I use. Thirst, you, yes. and, you and I have reviewed a lot of dumb things over the years, right? But this this is well. So let's talk about the Internet of Things because this is the most. This is one of the more egregious, ludicrous examples of it. Um, but let's also talk about the fact that when your water bottle can text you, you're allowing it into the citadel of your private information, even if it's dipping in, uh, even what number it's texting, and you're not necessarily sure it's secure. And if you're wondering. The Internet of Things is so insecure. There is a search engine now for open baby monitor feeds. That's right. Yeah. You can watch baby. other that's people's creepy. children sleep. And if that's not about as creepy as it gets. Did you, did you see the thing? In, I could just see the at Law & Order SVU. So you're telling me <laughs> that there was, there's some guy that gets off of watching oh, babies sleep? It's worse. <laughs> it's good. I On see hydration? That. Yeah. <laughs> On hydration? <laughs> um, there was a thing a couple weeks ago about a guy, about a family who's like two year old said that he he had an imaginary friend that was in his room <gasps> and it was some guy talking to him through his baby monitor that oh is, my god is, yeah and it took him it took him weeks to figure it out right so, oh my god yeah. oh my god because they thought he had an imaginary because they thought friend. he had an imaginary friend and you're oh, not supposed to like you're not supposed right. to challenge that for all no, sorts of reasons you're, not. So, you're supposed to let so, it happen so oh my god. yeah so like they happened to be walking by his bedroom one night and they heard a voice and they were like what the fuck is this <laughs> this is like so then they killed his imaginary friend at the same time this is i used to uh, I, I used to know a guy who was telling me about having gone on a camping trip with a bunch of friends and they all dropped acid and they were all tripping balls a friend on this camping trip. No, it wasn't me. I wasn't there. Okay. Um, and one of the guys was like, dude, I'm covered with bugs. I'm covered with bugs. And they're like, you're not covered with bugs. It's totally cool. You can see where this is going. <laughs> and this poor oh, guy no. had, for his first acid trip, sat on a mound of stinging ants. Oh, no. When they lifted his long hair, <laughs> ants were covering his neck. Oh. So they went from, dude, you're not covered with bugs, to, dude, we are so sorry. <laughs> we or more like, dude, we are so like, sorry. That, that feeling is bad enough when you're not you know, jacked up on acid like i we have a lemon tree in the backyard and the kind of ants that live on lemon trees are these little tiny itsy bitsy guys and when it rains sometimes they come into the house and then you have the is this an ant on me or is am i just imagining yeah. it now and i can't imagine if you were oh my god no, yes. <laughs> um speaking no thanks. so the baby monitors the internet of oh, things the, the water, water bottles. bottles no th there's a limit there's a the, so there's a tw there's a Twitter uh, Internet of shit. Right? The Internet of shit. There, yes. There's a, a guy who's been tweeting. I follow it. I love it. And then there's a couple of people who are tweeting some of the worst stuff at CES. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, some it, of the most it's misguided. a high bar actually to get the worst stuff is you have to really work to find the the terrible garbage. The camera that's inside your fridge to look inside your fridge. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of wouldn't mind having a camera inside that like is like a wildlife camera that when I open the fridge door it takes a picture of you, <laughs> yeah, to like or of whoever's <laughs> open the door, poof. Oh, no, no. I see that no, you got some is, ice cream in the middle of the This is so night. if you're at the grocery store, and I can understand why they made this. You can get the live feed from inside your fid, fridge to see if you dark. still have milk. I'm sure they use IR or oh my or god, that, that's the, the, I, the flashlight, right? Like, look, I'm I am <laughs> I am the worst. Of, like, I put all the smart bulbs and all that stuff in my house last year. And when the smart bulb start, stopped talking to my hub in December, basically, 
I wasn't able to turn on lights. I wasn't able to control the lights in my kids' room because I, I had taken her just, agency it makes me away. So mad! I got the hue and I got the puck, and I only, I pretty much only use that lamp in my living room when I have a party, which is whatever. It's not every weekend, so every single time I want to turn on this goddamn lamp, someone has to go to the basement and push a. Button. <laughs> What's a button makes me so mad. So, <laughs> it, it's a great social yeah. experiment. This, it, we're, we're like, to be mm, mm, nest is getting it right. That stuff doesn't doesn't mess up on me. No, it's not. No, when nest, when nest stops working, you have even bigger problems. Oh, I, I it's have, like your smoke alarm doesn't work. Uh, well, yeah, I have some difficulty with my smoke yeah. alarms, but uh, at any rate, yeah, it, it hasn't fallen off the network randomly every single time I find myself interested in the service I've bought them, I've paid them to provide. Well, so in in fairness, the smart things thing I talked about this on, this on the only test a few weeks ago. Um, I did actually finally get through to support, and they walked me through a process that was laborious and time intensive. And if I had a house that was any larger at all, it would. Have not at all been worth it, but everything works again, and you know, the internet of shit. And so much of, of it is tied through, you know, your router, which is possibly, if you have a bad one, the most unreliable piece of technology, <laughs> the house. least secure, yes, and yeah. most right. inconsistent be performing. Um, so anyway, you saw some camp, future technology. Yeah. So, um, speaking of camp, speaking of camp, yeah. camping. Uh, you're we talk about there. camping with nice. the ants. Well done. I thought you set. were bringing well, drag queens into the discussion. Good at segues. <laughs> I'm not so much. Um, so I was in Chicago I last week. You're weekend. both terrible at. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we've talked about the defining characteristic podcast, right? Yes. Is that you have to call out the segue? Yeah. We stopped doing it for a while because people complained. I think it's charming, personally. <laughs> people on the internet complain i know it's shocking isn't it um so i was at uh in chicago for a unconference called ord camp and an unconference sounds like the like the most horrible douchey san francisco silicon valley thing that you can imagine it kind of is but it's it, the it's good it's it's a it's an it interesting fun. experience yeah it's always this is the second year i've gone um and it's based on what started as Foo Camp here in San Francisco, or I think in Sebastopol. It's a thing that O'Reilly does. And it basically is an idea. The idea is that you, if you bring a bunch of interesting people together and then let them set the, the agenda, you're going to have you, you're something. It will be a good event. Right. Um, and it, 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 I've been twice so far. It has been a good event both times. Well, and um, it, it is sort of it, one of the things about the EG conference that I've loved for all the years that I've been going, which is almost all the years it's been going, um, is hanging out with the other presenters. I mean, that's yeah. You know, I'm going to TED and I'm really looking forward to it. They, they're they very insistent when you go to TED that you stay the whole week. So I am. Um, but it, it is sort of like a, a conference without a conference. That I mean, that's exactly it. So the the structure of the food camp and ord camp I, I don't know how different food camp and ord camp are but the way ord camp works is you, you show up are they gonna fight someday gonna rumble i mean that would be i think the chicago <laughs> i'm putting my money on the chicago people not the nerds um so you show up there's like an opening session where they kind of break everybody off into little groups so they so they tell you here's how this works um and it gives you some if you've never been you don't know any people there it gives you some familiar faces so mm -hmm. you can kind of latch on if you get anxious or nervous or whatever and um to be sure it can be anxious, anxiety inducing to be at some of these things when you're talking to, oh, you're the guy that invented the thing. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I, like it's high imposter syndrome. Yeah, it, it, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to fall into that. Um, but you do that. There's an opening session. They do a disrupt, which is uh, like a kind of like um, it's a presentation where you have five minutes. You have, I think, 20 slides or something like that. And the slides advance mm -hmm. every five seconds, regardless of whether you press the button or not. Right. You can't speed them up or slow them down. Uh, and people like tell funny talks. This was probably the best disrupt. Uh, oh. I've seen a bunch of these over the years because people do them here all the time. Oh, okay. it was one of the best ones I've ever seen. It's a lot of slides. It's a bottom. Over. It's it's very quick. You choose the slides. You pick the slides oh, okay. out. Okay. So you prepare your talk. It's about preparation. It's not an improv exercise. I see. Gotcha. And you tell your story, but but you can't you can't slow down or speed up. You have it's always five minutes. Right. 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 Um, and they did twelve of those, I guess, and they mm. were twelve like it widely ranged from really personal stuff and and stuff about health and and you know social social reform and stuff like that to you know a funny story that the guy who made exploding kittens told um, <laughs> the about card game. the card game. Yeah, about we're actually um, exploding kittens. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 there's a whole range. Right, right. So then you break out from that and you go put post-it cards on a big giant board. The, it's a grid of rooms and times. Um, and you put a, uh, you basically put either something you want to share or something you want to learn about. Um, so, you know, those topics range from 
super serious stuff like alcoholism and and you know drug policy reform to uh horseback archery some guy was like i'm i wanted to learn a new skill and i like archery and i wanted to learn more about riding horses so i wanted to learn about you know riding ho- horseback archers like in the mongolian steppes in the mm. at the you know turn of the century before last um and you you have an opportunity to kind of and the, the, this is important. One of the rules is that you can drop in, drop out. So if somebody gets up in the middle of a talk, nobody gets offended. You don't get your feelings hurt. It just means that I've had as much as I want to be. If, if right, there's any place right. you'd rather oh, be cool. that's not there, then you get up and leave. And it's no harm, no foul. So people talk about like how to how to set up a Kickstarter the right way, hmm. um, how to how to like the right way to be a social to 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 promote your stuff on social media mm-hmm. without being kind of douchey about it. Um, they talk about making coffee or making, uh, there was one session that was just stupid liquid nitrogen tricks. <laughs> so they had a doer full of liquid nitrogen and a guy who does science presentations yeah. said, here's, here are 20 things that you can do that are safe and fun and illustrate interesting Ooh. scientific principles using liquid nitrogen. Like you like, here's how to make liquid oxygen. Cause it oxygen freezes out of the air or right, right. liquefies out of the air on the outside of a garbage bag. If yeah. you put liquid nitrogen in the garbage bag, um, here's how to make a, a nitrogen oh, cool. cannon with a two liter bottle that you yeah. drill a hole in the cap. I want that list. Put the ni- it was good. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. we can do that. If you, if you want to do a video, no, I, I can yeah. steal that. Um, we made we made nitrogen ice cream with the leftover nitrogen. There were Whoa. people doing so. It, it's a mix of teachers, scientists, internet people, um, content people. Uh, but it's not uh, open to the public. It's so it's not. It's applications, mm. um, and usually they they get people by having nominations. So it started out as like seventy five people eight years ago, and this year there were three hundred and fifty or four hundred people oh. there. Um, oh, that's a lot. That's a but, lot more than I thought. But the interesting thing about it is it's self organizing. So if you wanted to do one, right, it would be. There's no reason you can't do one, assuming you find you have space that you can right. get a group of people together. Right. Um, and, they, and that's really cool. Yeah. The self-organizing nature of it is the yeah. thing that I think is really interesting. And it means that if like you have a community <clears throat> of people who make games or people who make or woodworkers or people who do this, you can bring them all in, have your fun weekend, send them out and tell them to bring to invite three friends next year. And mm. you can you can grow it um like it will grow organically over time. Yeah. If you manage the people that you, that you bring well. Very cool. So yeah, it's highly recommended. That's what were some more interesting talks. Any highlights? Um, the horseback archery one was fascinating. Like it sounds like the most esoteric weird thing ever. Um, but it's, it was this guy and I, I, I can't remember his name, but he talked about, um, You're looking for a specific space in the gallop to fire. Well, uh, no, it's not even that it's, it's a, it's a completely like normal archery. You, you take your shot and you line up, you take a really long time and you line up the shot and you get it exactly right. And with horseback archery, it's much more about just kind of developing the instincts to fire quickly. Cause like if you're riding at a canter or a gallop and your target, like it's a, it's a competitive sport. Mm-hmm. You ride down a straight line for the most part and there's targets on either side and you have 12 shots and you have 10 targets or something like that. Wow. And you want to hit the targets. Um, but if, but like the normal thing where you pull back and hold just doesn't work. Right. You can't use like a complex, uh, a compound bow or anything like that because they, they take too long to, to load and pull. So you're using like simple what look like Mongolian yeah. recurve bows and you fire, 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 fire. And it's switching left, right, left, right, left, right the whole time. So you have to be able to both communicate really well with the horse to get the horse to do exactly what you want. And, and he, he, he does it because it's a mindfulness exercise. For right. Him. Of so course. Of course. You know, you're, you, you can literally only concentrate on these two incredibly difficult things while you're doing this, wow. this exercise. So that was good. Um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, who raises bees in Chicago and, and is, uh, she has a company called Bika Bee. Um, so she, she harvests honey, did a really great session, two set great sessions, one about tasting different Chicago honeys, which tastes completely different from Northern California honeys. Cause they have a lot of linden there. So it's a lot um, of what, uh, it's a tree called linden, <clears throat> which is wow. a, something that the pollinators get on. Uh, and it, it has a almost like medicinal, um, like a fennel kind of, oh, that's um, so cool. it has a completely different taste. I didn't realize the honey is very light and they come in different. And we talked about like why some honeys are thicker and crystallize at a different temperature. One mm-hmm. honey, some honeys, um, have different, you know, obviously different flavors come mm-hmm. from different nectars, Yeah, but, but the different crystal, like she had three honeys from the same hive that were different amounts of crystallization at different times. Oh, nice. Um, uh, and then, uh, she also did a thing about monarch butterflies, raising monarch butterflies, which is a super easy thing that you can do with your kids. You go out and find the eggs on milkweed, bring the leaves back and keep putting milkweed in there. And the, you can watch the caterpillars grow from, you know, a fraction of the size of a fingernail up to, you know, a big giant fat monarch caterpillar. And 
and then get to the you see the cocoons and, and, oh. the chrysalis rather yeah sorry <laughs> so cool um it was it's it's just a really nice yeah i met some good folks from youtube um uh talked about how that weird place works and, <laughs> um it was it's a it's a really it's it's just neat to meet a bunch of interesting people that are outside of your normal sphere yeah yeah like that there's a huge benefit is any that. of it documented uh, no, so it's all off the record. Uh, it's all secret. I mean, oh, it's not nice. secret, but it's all it's friendly. Um, <laughs> friendly is what they yeah. call it. Yeah. So yeah. you you unless you say, hey, can I talk to people about this? And you generally right. don't talk. Oh, about very it. cool. Yeah. So well, welcome uh, back. Hey, thanks. Yeah. It was a good, good, intellectual good time. venture. Yeah, exactly. Well, not not, not exactly. Ventures, yeah, but. not intellectual ventures, but yeah. intellectual. <laughs> um, so uh, it's worth saying Google gives people gives them the space to do it. Um, the guy who, the two folks, the two guys who started it are Zach Kaplan from Inventables. Mm -hmm. Uh, they make the Carvey, yep. which I think you guys have one now, right? Not, no, oh, it's one. coming. X Carve okay. and Carvey. Yep. Okay. Um, and, uh, Brian Fitzpatrick, uh, who was formerly at Google and now has a startup. Um, but he was, the, he's, he was in charge of data takeout. So like the thing that you can use to pull all your data off Google stuff, I think was him back oh, in the old days. Oh, okay. you, you, yeah. Anyway. So that's it. That's what I did this weekend. Interesting. That's I, 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 that's really, I've been wanting to go to one of those for years. I've never had the time. Um, I, you, you're inspiring me to want to accept the next time an invitation comes in for a foo or, or well, I'll like remind that. you next year. I, you. I, as long as they keep inviting me, I'll keep going. It's, <laughs> it's entirely worthwhile. So anyway, awesome. I guess anything else? Uh, have you guys been watching anything? Enjoying no. any anything in media? I can see. I watched Jessica Jones. You finished Jessica finished Jones. Jessica we Jones. talked about that. Yeah, I know you talked about it with Rebecca. That was a great podcast. I, oh, I, I was really. Fun. I watched all of uh, Fargo. Oh, how's that? I haven't watched oh, it. It's really good. There's too yeah. much good TV these days. It's almost driving me crazy. Um, I started to watch the X Files and fell asleep on the couch because I was up until five o'clock in the morning <laughs> on Sunday. Um, I read a really great book called uh, Station Eleven on the plane. Uh, it's by Emily. Uh, hold on, let me look. It's Emily St. John. It's a post-apocalyptic book, uh, you know, about your typical super flu type situation. Okay. Um, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mendel. Uh, it's a very, it's unusually well written in the same way that Pat Rothfuss's books are unusually delightful prose and fantasy. Yeah. It was a really lovely, really lovely construction. And it's told in a pretty unique way in that, in that genre and has mm. some really interesting things to say, I think, about about um it's worth reading post-apocalypse any other details um the it, so the it, it um it, it's a very personal story told in a in a in a on both the immediate <clears throat> pre and immediate post-apocalypse and then it jumps 15 years in the future and kind of intercuts between the past and the and the future um in a way that gives you it, it's 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 a really like i said it's it's in the same way like pat Pat Rothfuss for the name of the wind in those books has this framework story that is a, a great construction for um, giving not ha for, to avoid the omnipotent narrator problem. Right. Um, and this is the same situation. You, I really had no idea where the book was going. I, it, it connected in a, what is an incredibly implausible way in a way that I felt was very believable and, and quite good. Uh, and I finished the three body problem, which I think we talked a little bit yeah. about a few weeks ago. And that book is outstanding all right i'm um, definitely i'm definitely gonna it's, grab that. it's it's up there yeah it's it's like seven eves oh nice kind of. okay all right like not it's completely different topics yeah, completely yeah, different yeah. things it's about the, uh, seti and the cultural revolution and it gave me a much better understanding of what the cultural revolution mm -hmm. meant to china and and how um when uh deng Xiaoping uh had the cultural reforms in i guess the 80s or 90s is that right uh that that Basically, the reason three body problem is interesting right now, I think, is that we're in a we're in a place where a significant portion of the of our country and our leaders are being willfully ignorant about science, right. technology, things that are that are well established. And it, there's parallels politicizing to what facts. Exactly. Yeah, um, it's it's relevant uh, in both the aftermath and the context. OK, yeah. so I started the Moybridge book. It's great. Isn't oh, it beautiful? It's so great. It's two chapters in every every like it's a slow two chapters to get into but the almost every page has like a college level thesis in one sense it's like wow beautiful. this is rebecca solnit's oh, book yes. river of dreams mm -hmm. about edward moybridge and it's <clears throat> and it's muggeridge he has five different names throughout his lifetime it's beautifully written and you're right yeah there's a tremendous there's many more ideas presented in the book than are actually yeah. thought all the way through it's, right just like ideas like oh as trains were being developed, you know, they were digging into the earth and 
the, just the explosion of geology like expanded time as trains collapsed time. Like, right. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, ton- oh that's great. Yeah, you're right. Norm's right. It's every page is packed with stuff like that. And it's San Francisco based, right? He did yeah, most yeah. of his career here. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's as good a place as any to. Yeah, I, I think that's a good, a good bit of quiet podcast. We also week. like take, yeah. <clears throat> taking recommendations from, from you guys. out. Absolutely. Yeah. What have you been enjoying reading, watching, listening to? Uh, again, there's so much good stuff to go, go around. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Everybody. Like us on uh, YouTube, Facebook, iTunes podcast, all the places you can. Just press that thumbs up or the thumb. It's fine. We love feedback. <laughs> see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. And I'm out of practice on that. Thanks for listening to that episode of Still Untitled. We'd like to thank the sponsor of this week's episode, which is Casper Mattresses, obsessively engineered American-made mattresses at a shockingly fair price. And now you can get $50 toward any mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash untitled and using the offer code untitled. You know the deal. You spend about a third of your life sleeping. Make sure you're doing it on a good mattress. Casper brings together two comfy technologies. Name them with me. You got memory foam and you got latex foam for better nights and brighter days. Just the right amount of sink and right amount of bounce no matter how you sleep. They have a risk-free return, um, free trial and return policy delivered straight to you. You get 100 days. You get to actually sleep on it. And if you're not happy with it, they'll pick it back up. It's $500 for a twin-size mattress and $950 for a king-size mattress. And you can get $50 off any mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash untitled and using the offer code untitled. Terms and conditions may apply, and we'll see you next week for another episode of Still Untitled. Thanks a lot.